Welcome back. Today we will explore the fascinating world of a server-side template injection vulnerability. In this educational YouTube video, we will deep dive into Handlebars, a popular template engine used by Node.js, and discover how it can be exploited. Through a step-by-step -step walkthrough, we will learn how an attacker can take an advantage of an SSTI vulnerability when developers fail to properly sanitize user input. So without further ado, let's get started. During the intro, I conducted an Nmap scan and discovered that uh, there is an OGS application running. To gain a deeper understanding of this web application, I installed Webalizer. This reveals that it utilizes the Express framework. As I have prepared for this challenge, I briefly glanced at the questions on the portal and discovered that it was related to an SSTI. Further research led me to an informative page by Hextrix, which provided all the necessary details. To test if the site is vulnerable, I decided to perform a simple math operation test and executed it. As a result, the application broke and the error provided even more valuable information. It confirmed that it is using the handlebars environment. While exploring the Hexix website, I stumbled upon an intriguing section dedicated to handlebars. It turns out that this discovery could potentially open up new opportunities for us to exploit the application. To leverage this newfound knowledge, I'll prepare Burpsuit, a powerful tool that will assist us in utilizing the code we just uncovered. Before we dive into the technical details, let's take a moment to understand what exactly server-side template injection entails. SSTI is a critical vulnerability where an attacker injects malicious input into a template, allowing them to execute commands on the server side. This vulnerability arises when inadequate uh, validation and sanitization of user input occurs within the template engine, often leading to the dreaded outcome of remote code execution. Now that we have Burp Suite set up to proxy our traffic, let's take a moment to appreciate the power it provides. By simply pressing Ctrl R, we can effortlessly redirect our request to the repeater tab, where the magic of exploitation begins. To proceed, we need to retrieve the code from the Hectrix website and encode it for URL compatibility. Once we have the encoded string, we can uh, strategically place it within our request and hit send. Let's carefully inspect our response that we received. And it seems like there is a reference error occurring. To overcome this hurdle, let's try a different approach. Instead of our initial code, let's modify it to run the process. By encoding this modify string and resending it, we can observe if we obtain a successful return or if the application breaks again. As we repeat the process, incorporating the newly encoded parameters, we can uh, see a breakthrough. We have managed to retrieve an object. To take this further, I quickly conducted a Google search to understand the syntax required to execute code on the remote server. With a few attempts, we triumphantly executed a command on the shell itself, retrieving valuable information such as the user running the process. This revelation not only exposes the app's inadequate sanitization, but it also raises alarm bells as we discover it is running as root. The implications of such a situation can be tremendously dangerous if the app were to be compromised. Now that we have successfully exploited the newfound vulnerability, let's take our exploration a step further. Since we previously observed when the application crashed that uh, files were stored in slash root, um, uh, I think it's best if we start by listing its contents. As we executed the command, we are thrilled to witness the fruits of our labor. There is the elusive flag. But our journey doesn't end there. By utilizing the cat command, we can also display the file contents right on our screen, unveiling its secrets. Having accomplished our mission of retrieving the flag, it's crucial to reflect on the lessons learned and the significance of running applications as non-privileged users. As we've experienced firsthand, the repercussions of running an application with elevated privileges can potentially lead to complete system compromise. Take a moment to comment down below and share your experiences with similar issues in the environments you work in. Let us use the opportunity to raise awareness and encourage discussions around addressing these potential security risks. Now it's time to dive into the questions that are waiting for us on the Hack the Box portal. For the first question, we only had two ports open, which were 80 and 22. The software running the service that's listening on the HTTP port is Node.js. The name of the web framework that is used for this web application, we can retrieve it from the Webalizer and its Express. 
For our fourth question, um, the vulnerability that we have taken advantage of is um, server side template injection. I made a small mistake here. It's without the hyphen. So I'm just going to remove that and submit my answer. The templating engine used was handlebars as shown in the application crash initially. The coder is used in uh, perp suite to encode our text in URL format. And for this question, as I have just mentioned, um, uh, the type of encoding is URL. Require was not defined in the response error, so we're just going to type it here. The top level uh, scope variable is going to be global, which is used by Node.js and various other frameworks. And as we have mentioned a few times before, the web server is uh, running as root. And finally, we can also submit the flag. We can just copy that and paste it in from the burp suite. And that brings us to the end of this challenge. I'd like to thank you for joining us on this captivating journey through the world of uh, server-side template injection and hack the box challenges. I hope that you found this video informative and engaging. If you enjoyed this content and want to stay updated with our latest videos, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. By subscribing, you'll never miss out on future adventures in the realm of cybersecurity and other exciting topics. Stay curious, keep learning.